The international break leaves club football a desolate wasteland with nothing to do. It's alright because I'm still here though. Hey, what's going on my sweet friends? Come on in, how you all doing? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Yana. I do hope you lot are all doing well today. I really do hope that. I might stand a little bit further back today. Ooh, different. I feel further away from my subscribers. Anyway, welcome back to Chelsea News, the daily series right here on Football Therapy, where I see what's being said about the rags, react to it, giving you my opinion, but more importantly, asking for yours. The players may all be off with their national teams doing bits, but the stories keep going, baby. Two big bangers I want to talk about today, recurring narratives, but updates on two transfer stories. One being Fikayo Tomori and how Milan looking like they're going to buy him and Chelsea are going to be in the mud on this one, I'm afraid. And rather disappointingly, the other story isn't positive either. Certain reports suggesting Erling Haaland to Real Madrid is all but done. What? Not sure I believe that, but we'll get into it anyway. Please consider subscribing for daily content to bring you, my friend, through this international break. I can keep it Chelsea, so subscribe and hit that bell notifications icon. It's important. Drop a like if you want to show your sweet love. And let me tell you, this video is brought to you by One Football. That's right, this international break is going to be difficult, so we're going to need to be plugged in to the beautiful club game everywhere we can. One Football can help you achieve that a totally free app that gives you everything you need to know about Chelsea and your national team it will give you lineups fixtures match alerts statistics transfer news click the link in the description go get one football for free do yourselves that favor all right then let's get into our first story today and talk about Big Fig Tamori. First and foremost, I want to talk about how I do not begrudge the player going to Milan and having an excellent loan move and potential transfer by the looks of things. He's having such a good time. The Milan fans absolutely adore him. He's winning loads of Milan MVP awards out there. He's having a great time. He's learning Italian. That His teammates love him. Like I said, the fans love him. It's just going really well for the lad. And as like a sort of human being, you can't feel negative about that. It sucks that we've got a really good defender that might go for a real cheap price that comes from the academy and generally had a good feel good story at Chelsea. But ultimately, it's not like we're leaking goals here at Chelsea. We've conceded two under Thomas Tuchel in his entire tenure. So our defence has been really, really good. And I've said in previous videos, maybe Tomori isn't the quintessential ball-playing defender Thomas Tuchel is looking at. But then again, he's implied that he hasn't really looked at him yet anyway. I'm going to cite an article in just a moment. But I wanted to get that out there. Think about Chelsea's immaculate defence as it is at the moment. It makes you think like, uh, you know... It is a disappointment that he went just before Tuchel came in and it is rather peculiar that Frank Lampard let him go after sort of backing him so much at Derby and then at Chelsea. Maybe something going on there that we don't know about but I'm not going to throw conspiracy theories at you. I'll leave you a lot to do that down in the comment section below. Let's cite football.london's article for some information on this story. Chelsea might just have seen the last of defender for Kayo Tomori with the 23 year old's future out of their hands. Tomori joined AC Milan on loan to the end of the season during the January transfer window, having seen next to no action in the first half of the season at Chelsea. Things might have been different if he waited just a few more days with Thomas Tuchel taking over from Frank Lampard shortly after his departure. Hey, that's football. And things have worked out rather well for Tomori in any case. The young defender is already racking up 12 appearances across all competitions for AC Milan. Yeah, so you could say he took a little bit of a risk going out to Milan, not knowing if they were... I think at first they didn't necessarily promise him as a starter game time. I think he benched Romagnoli, there's an injury and he came in and he's really, really impressed. And he's been excellent ever since, like I said, winning loads of MVP awards doing excellent sort of superstar last ditch tackles in Europe and stuff like that. Looking really, really good. Let's read on. The 23 year old is already becoming part of the furniture at the San Siro, impressing boss Stefano Pioli to the point that he's seen Milan quickly make a decision on the defender's future. According to Mediaset, AC Milan have already decided to activate the 28 million euro, brackets 24 million pounds, 
Buyout clause they hold in Tamori's loan deal. Tamori had a deal running until 2024 at Stamford Bridge, and Tuchel suggested he might have a future at the club, speaking in February. Quote, It's tradition at Chelsea that many players go out on loan and get minutes somewhere else, when they cannot make regular minutes here. Yeah, so that's a pretty generic quote from Thomas Tuchel. He came in and says, look, he goes on loan, Chelsea players always go on loan. This doesn't mean the end. Probably not thinking about it that much, but it's seemingly becoming closer and closer to the end. Let's read the last bit of Thomas Tuchel quote in this article. This is good because it's always the target for me to have players who can make a different in different circumstances, who can show their qualities in different cultures and in different clubs. It's always a good sign so we'll have this talk in the next weeks and months about all the guys who are on loan. Of course I have a general impression of Tomori which means that he has a high potential but I'm not into all the details right now. I remember this press conference Tuchel pretty much said look man He's great, I have a general idea of what he's good at, probably thinking like recovery pace and interceptions, because that is what Tamori's good at. But he's like, I can't think of this right now. And fair play to Thomas Tuchel, man. He's just been dropped in in, you know, middle of the season. He's got all this stuff to get his head around. Chelsea have so many loan players as it is, you can't know exactly what's going on with every loan player. I think people will just show him reports, metrics, and then from there you can make a decision, but you can't blame Tuchel for this, man. This is like really, really difficult stuff. Um, personally, I think I think he's going to go, man. I think Tomori would probably would really like to come back to Chelsea, start for Chelsea, especially in this particular project where we look like we could win a lot of stuff. But ultimately, it's so, so good for him and Milan. He's learning Italian, he's in the culture, he's valued by the players, uh, the, you know, the management, the fans. And maybe he thinks, look, he looks back at Stamford Bridge and goes, they're not conceding goals. They're probably not going to want a radical change, or if they do, they might go for a Jose Maria Jimenez or someone really, really, really top tier, you know what I mean, high profile. And that's probably quite unfair on Tomori, who's a really good defender, but that's football. Hey man, it's a nice story for the kid, it's a sad story for Chelsea fans and maybe the covers in terms of our profile, but ultimately, and a lot of people won't want to hear this, but what is it, like 20, 20, 24 million, over 24 million pounds for an academy product is pretty amazing. Like Chelsea will see that as free money, um, you know, already you could say, okay, 24.1 million off the loss of Kepa Ritha Balaga, Yes, and that sounds really like, you know, thinking of them as assets, but that's how the club does it, it's a business. So it's kind of sad for Vicar Tamori, but happy at the same time. Anyway, let me know what you think about this story down in the comment section below as we move on to the next story of today's video, and that's Erling Haaland to Real Madrid. Right, it's a weird one. I've just read this off, I think it's Daily Express. Basically, I, it's a source coming from Spain, and often Spanish reports saying things, you know, like Barcelona, Real Madrid transfer, done. You can never really believe. Now, ultimately, you guys know what this series is about. I react to headlines. I don't have any ins. I don't pretend to believe any headlines and stories. I just take you through them and tell you what's being said. <laughs> and this is very much one of those, but it's interesting. So I'm going to take you through this article and then sort of dissect it piece by piece and give you my opinion. Let's go. Erling Haaland to Real Madrid, quote, is practically done, end quote. According to the Spanish pundit, Eduardo Inda, the Borussia Dortmund star could leave when the transfer window reopens this summer. Although Manchester United, Chelsea and Manchester City are all admirers of the striker, they could be poised to miss out. Well, he's already linked to the three Premier League teams that want to get Haaland, including little old Chelsea Football Club. Remember, there's been certain article saying Roman Abramovich promises Thomas Tuchel Erling Haaland transfer should they achieve top four. Articles that I've reported on here on Football Therapy. Interesting how different news outlets have different information. Let's read on. Haaland has established himself as one of the world's best strikers during his time at Dortmund. The Norway international has been in blistering form this season, scoring over 30 goals in all competitions already. That is insane. Manchester United want to sign the forward, viewing him as the perfect replacement for Edison Cavani, should the Uruguayan international leave. Manchester City consider Haaland to be the ideal 
signing amid their belief Sergio Aguero will leave the Etihad Stadium behind the end of the campaign. And Chelsea are keen too, having seen Olivier Giroud, Tammy Abraham and Timo Werner blow hot and cold in this term. Yet yeah, well, we've all got certain reasons for wanting Erling Haaland. I don't think with Chelsea it's so much blowing hot and cold. Giroud will probably go. We're not sure Tammy Abraham will re-sign a new deal. And you know, again, the jury's out on whether he can be a first team striker for Chelsea. And Timo Werner isn't looking like a centre forward in the Premier League. He didn't always play a centre forward in Leipzig, often played off a big man. So it's, un it's unfair really to highlight any of those players as a sort of, you know, player Chelsea can't rely on. Because Aguero centre forward, Cavani centre forward, do you know what I mean? Giroud gone, Tammy potentially not good enough. Anyway, let's read on. Okay, Diario chief Inder, however, has now claimed that Haaland to Real Madrid, quote, is practically done. He said, Haaland signing for Madrid is practically done. It is closer than it seems. One of the keys is Fiorentino's great harmony with the president of Dortmund, who are contemporary and get along very well. The negotiation with Riola is being carried out by Jose Engel Sanchez, and the agreement with the footballer is closed. Okay, I mean, that means, whoa. That actually sounds pretty conclusive. He's like name drops everyone. He's like, yeah, Dortmund and Real Madrid do business. They're happy with each other. Mina Riola has already done the uh, negotiating on that and the players signed it off. <laughs> that doesn't sound positive. I'm worried, sad, and disappointed. I'll give you my opinion on this in just a second. Let's close in the article. Dortmund have set a price of 129 million pounds in order to let Holland leave, and in the claims, Real will try and haggle that price down. It would cost around 150 million euros in total, he said. Real Madrid is seeing how to pay for it. They have the best financial situation in all the teams in Europe, but they are doing the stadium at the same time, and they are looking at how to finance it. They are seeing how to get the money. Right, hold on. Real Madrid have the best financial situation in Europe. Now, this is where the story falls down for me. I thought Real Madrid, like most La Liga clubs, are in massive financial problems. Maybe not as bad as Barcelona, but because of the stadium and because of like lack of revenue of no people in the Bernabeu and stuff, and you know, paying loads for like Hazard and stuff, I thought they were in big financial trouble. So this is where the story starts to fall down for me. I'm not going to pretend I'm in any form of finances or I work in finance and know that much about Real Madrid. But after hearing pundits and experts talk about their Liga clubs, including Real Madrid not having money, I'm starting to doubt this story. But it does make a lot of sense. They want that Galactico, I mean, they signed Eden Hazard as a Galactico, and he really is of that quality, of course. But we all know what's happened with Eden Hazard there. The thing is, it does make sense them going for someone like Erling Haaland, and he would absolutely destroy La Liga, of course. And they've been so heavily reliant on Karim Benzema, who's obviously had a sort of like renaissance in his career since Cristiano Ronaldo left because he's become the main man. He's no longer a player to set up Cristiano Ronaldo. He is the guy. He's just the guy. But Karim Benzema is 33 and counting. They need to replace him, basically. 20-year-old Erling Haaland for the next 10... 13, 14, 15 years, thank you very much. So I can understand why they'd go in for him to replace Benzema, and if they do have the finances, well, good for them. Chelsea certainly do though, especially with all this recent activity with Roman Abramovich. So it's peculiar. Is it already practically done? Well, this Spanish pundit seems to have like laid out the things like the player, the agent, the two clubs talking, which makes it sound kind of worrying, but I'm going to reserve judgment until more stories come out. Plus, you know, it's a circus Spanish media and football transfers. Anyway, let me know what you think down in the comment section below. I want to hear it, my friends. Give me your opinions. I want this to start up a discussion down in the comment section. If you enjoyed the content, please do drop a like. That's very kind of you. Subscribe if you're new and make sure you do turn on the bell notifications icon for daily Chelsea FC content here on Football Therapy to get you through the international break. Right, that's it from me, so enjoy the football and I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby